Alright everybody, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to go over a Lightroom tutorial about how we can do some basic modifications and adjustments of photos, and then I'm going to get into some a little bit of advanced uh, stuff, getting some uh, area-based corrections rather than just global corrections. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into that. Alright, popping up Lightroom right now. Okay, this is a photograph I got at a roller derby bout a couple months ago. Um, originally, I didn't didn't choose to edit this picture because uh, I didn't really see anything inside the picture that I that I liked. Um, but coming back again, every once in a while, you, I take a, a moment in time to look at uh, old photos and then uh, then go through and see uh, see if there's something new that I might have had like a diamond in the rough. Um, reason why I like this photo is because you have these nice out of focus front elements, nice out of focus back elements, clear subject separation, and she has a nice line going about her which adds some interesting dynamics to it. Also, this image is relatively level between her plane. I know you can guys see this, but that's because the bleachers kind of go uh, angled towards the back of this photo, so it's going to always get that keystoning look. Um, but anyway, let's start out. Over here on the right side of the panel, we have uh, basic exposure, contrast. Uh, off the bat, I can see that this photo is very slightly underexposed, so I'm going to bring up the exposure. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to adjust the highlights down a little bit. She's got a little bit of hot highlights on her face, so I'm going to bring those down. And then perfect, that looks like a more even skin tone. And then I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit so I get a little bit more detail out of the shadows. Okay. And then I'm going to drop the black point a little bit so I can add some uh, dynamic range to the picture by uh, making so the blacks are more rich, true, deep blacks. And I'm going to do the opposite with the white point. I'm going to bring it up a little bit so I can make the whites a little bit brighter. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, um, I'm going to ignore presence for the time being. I'm going to go through some, some basic corrections first. Um, but what I like to do when I start out the photos is to kind of eliminate the distracting colors in the background. So I'm going to lower the saturation down just a little bit to desaturate the image. And then I'm going to bring up the vibrance a little bit. And that kind of does a, like this vibrance does all of the colors in a different manner than saturation does is the easiest way to describe it. Um, mainly because this kind of has less of a balance on skin tones for vibrance, more of a earthy tone stuff. Okay, so after that now I'm going to play with the white balance point. Um, a good way to do that is go to a point that should be perfectly white and just kind of adjust the white balance. It should at 4,000. Actually, looks pretty good at 4,000 right now, uh, 4,000 Kelvin. But I'm going to bring it down a little bit to the cooler side, see if that looks a little bit whiter to me. And I'm going to bump this up just a little bit. Now I think 4,000 Kelvin was pretty, pretty dead on. Good job, camera. All right. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to enable remove chromatic aberrations and enable the profile corrections for this lens. As you can see, what it did is it kind of uh, defish-eyed it and uh, brightened up the sides of the image. Um, that's what the profile corrections do. I'll turn them off so you can see the difference, and then turn them on. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down, and I know that this was shot under halogen lights. Um, this down here is the calibration panel. Uh, while it could be done automatically by your camera, I prefer to just to do a little bit of small uh, calibration changes to this particular scene because I know very well that this one has a little bit more of a balance towards the red tones. So I'm going to bring down the red tones very slightly on the saturation. And I'm going to bring up the blue tones. Now, there's uh, a much better resources than myself for, for how to actually perform these calibrations, and I would highly recommend if you are interested in photography uh, about uh, how you can perform these calibrations, but I know that from this scene, from history, that uh, a, a small adjustment to these adjusts the white balance point. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and take the dropper. Um, it's balanced a little bit towards the blue end, so uh, that's nice. That's kind of the look I'm going And If you remember a second ago, I just pulled up the blues a little bit because that's how this scene is balanced. Okay, drop that dropper back in here. 
All right. So now we got our basic profile corrections out of the way. Um, what we're going to want to do is now focus on um, doing some local corrections. So I'm going to go over here and go to the adjustment brush. And I kind of want to um, further emphasize the subject separation. So how I'm going to do that is by doing a little bit of burning in the background. And I'm going to also defocus it slightly. So by decreasing the exposure by a stop, it already has I've already had the burn brush selected. Apparently I used it last. I'm going to also reduce the sharpness and I am going to increase the noise. Now what you're saying is I'm increasing the noise. Um, the noise slider works backwards of what you may think. Um, if you increase the noise, it actually softens the image. So I'll give you a little bit of a... Let me take off all of these other adjustments. Let me take off the sharpness and the exposure. And you can just see what the noise does. So I'm going to zoom in. Actually, You can see how it actually removes that noise when I brush over it. So. Um, this is a handy tip if you want to do local luminance based adjustments is go ahead and do it that way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the uh, decrease the exposure down by a third of a stop and I'm going to increase uh, or decrease the sharpness as well because I want to get that really smooth defocus back there. Um, handy tip, press O for your mask overlay and you can see uh, what it's been masking. I'm going to turn off auto mask for the time being, so I'm going to be doing some really broad brush strokes. Then when I get closer to the subject, I'm going to turn auto mask back on. Um, basically what auto mask does is it creates a mask for points of high contrast, and that high contrast point uh, that you have is uh, going to be between the subject and the background. So we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to just do some real broad brush strokes over here. I have a very large brush, and it's very highly feathered. I'm going to reduce the feather a bit to get a little bit harder and move it around the outside of the subject. Any sort of spillover that we have, we can correct towards the end. Um, I've seen a lot of photographers like to use different channels for this, and I kind of don't understand why you would use different channels. You make one adjustment mask. It should be that you use that adjustment mask for everything. Uh, okay. Um, it increases the intensity of processing for Lightroom when you do that. So we don't want to have that kind of intensity for processing. I want to make this as easy on my computer as possible. Okay, so as I had said there, uh, we're just going around the subject, kind of painting in the areas, and you can see a lot of overspill. And that's okay, because we have something called an eraser, and we're going to be using that. All right, going around the outside of our hand, and I'm going to turn off the mask overlay so you can guys kind of see what it looks like. You can see how the subject kind of just has a slight amount of pop that it did, uh, a little bit more than it did previously. So if I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that, sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and erase around that, and this time I'm gonna turn on auto mask. Erase the inside over here. Now it because I burned the image, it makes it so that the darks are darker. So it's actually kind of okay if we have a little bit of overspill in the dark areas. But if we burn a white area, it's pretty noticeable that you burned a white area compared to the rest of it. So we're going to try and make sure we have pretty accurate representation of that. So okay, so we're going like this, moving around the outside, gets allowing a little bit of overlap, that's okay. Sometimes people are really per very meticulous about making sure that is um, at the resolution that this will be viewed at, it's going to be kind of unnoticeable. Uh, it's going to be viewed at 1080p resolution on Instagram, and that's the platform I'm building for. Um, if I were to be printing this out, I would be very, very meticulous, probably broke, bring this up into photogra uh, Photoshop and um, do some uh, masking in Photoshop so I can make some pretty targeted adjustments. But because this is a nice, simple... Uh, photograph to edit. I'm going to be doing this all in Lightroom. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. Let me go ahead and uh, press the done button here. Boom, that's some nice uh, that's nice subject separation. Let's go ahead and look at before and after now. Bef this is before. All right. Okay, you can see it brightened it up. 
but kind of maintain the same darkness in the background. Um, so I'm going to go back to the adjustment brush. I think it can afford a little bit less exposure in the background to kind of enhance that subject separation. So I just press the O button to relieve the mask. I'll bring this down to a half a stop. I'd recommend you don't burn by more than a half a stop increment um, because it starts to look fake. So I kind of want to maintain that realism. All right. So as an example, if I were to bring it down really highly there, you can see now the outlines inside her legs for the overshot spots. Um, it just doesn't have this natural gradient look. So I'm going to bring that to around 0.5 down, and I think that's a pretty good burn. OK. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some target adjustments on her. Clean, but before I do that, I'm going to go back over to the basic adjustments. And I'm going to now, now that I have applied the adjustments for the background and the distracting uh, noise in the background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a global adjustment on top of that so that the background is even more blurred out and she increases uh, our subject over here. Uh, we'll have increased... Um, sharpness because if you're going to blur out the background if you're going to use luminosity noise reduction it'll affect both the subject and the background so we want to make sure that we are doing it for the subject not the background okay so i'm going to bring up the noise reduction until i reach a point where i think that this looks good it's going to do a little bit of processing okay let's see here you can see a little wheel spinning down here it's doing some processing and then bam got it softened out a little bit um yeah, that 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 could work. I'm gonna bring it. Uh, I think uh, I think that should be good. Let's zoom out. Yeah, that looks fine from far away. Um, let me actually bring that down just a little bit and zoom out. It's still processing. Okay. Uh, one of the trade-offs between noise reduction is that you actually reduce the sharpness, so I want to keep the sharpness as high as possible. Okay, that looks pretty solid. Once again, this is current, this is before, current, before. As you can see, definitely a lot more pop on her, and uh, definitely uh, better quality image. I can see right here from doing this that there might be a spot that I missed on my adjustment brush, so let me go back over here and just go ahead and paint in this spot right here. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty. Uh -oh. Oh, actually, that just created a new adjustment layer. Click over here. Click on this adjustment layer, and then remove the mask, and now paint down here. Yep, that was it. Okay, definitely missed that little spot right there. Alright. And then again, okay, cool. I go ahead and close this out. All right. So now that we have this uh, looking the way that we have it right here, I'm going to do some color base correction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase up the oranges very slightly. Oranges are skin tone colors, and I want to enhance her skin tone uh, saturation just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the aquas. Uh, their logo is teal, so I want to bring up the associated color channels, which would be aquas. A handy dandy tip over here. If I were to go over here and go over the pointer for the color selection, it would be right over here. And bring up the aquas. It brings up the blues by a small proportion. So that looks pretty good to me. I want to make the wheels pop a little bit more, so I'm going to go over here. It's going to bring up the blues a little bit. All right. That's good. Uh, it might be a little bit too much in the blues. Let me bring the blues down just a little bit. All right, that's good. And same thing for the luminance, but what I'm going to do um, is I'm actually going to bring the luminance down on these blues. Um, that makes it so the color looks more saturated because it's darker. So. All right. Very small adjustment to the blues there. Okay. Now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple final corrections here. Um, one of the main things that people notice when they're looking at images is the eyes. So I'm going to just go ahead and enhance the eyes a little bit. All right, I'm going to go over here. I already have a iris enhance that comes in Photoshop to file, but I also have an eye whitening tool. 
So I'm going to go ahead and enhance the eyes. I really like Photoshop's default iris enhancer. And when we're zoomed in this much, it's really, really hard to see if anything is being affected at all. But we'll zoom out in a second here after I'm done doing these masks or these uh, local point adjustments. And we'll go ahead and see what this actually did. Just take that spillover out. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new brush and do my eye whitening brush over here on the sides, over here, over here. Bam, a little bit of spillover. Holding down Alt allows you to pull up the eraser tool without deselecting. So I'm going to go over here as well. Hit over here, hit over here, and then eraser tool, eraser tool to the other side of the whites. Okay, and I'm going to do just a new brush, and I'm going to do a contrast brush. And this contrast brush, I'm just going to bring down a little bit, and I'm just going to go around the outline edges of the eyes to increase that local point contrast between the eyes and the outside of the eyes to add that extra emphasis to the eyes. Okay, same thing for the other side. The point is to make subtle adjustments that look nice and that are realistic. So apparently press the one button. Okay. All right, so here's the before, and here's the after. All right, I think that looks pretty good for and after. Okay. Yeah, is there anything I'd like to change anymore? Um, no, I think that pretty much does it. Okay, guys. Um, I know this is a little bit of a rapid-fire type of video, but I kind of wanted to make this a quick one. Uh, if you've enjoyed the content, please feel free to subscribe and like the video, and I'll have more uh, editing pictures, and I'll be putting this one on Instagram in the future. Uh, thank you. Bye.